did you General guys, Milley do the right thing, sir? Thank you. Let's go. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. General Milley do the right thing. I have great confidence in General Milley. President Biden in the White House defending Chairman of the Joint Chiefs General Mark Milley after explosive allegations in a new book, claiming that the general made secret calls to Chinese officials in an effort to undermine then-President Trump, and that he would warn China if the U.S. was going to attack. Another allegation details how Nancy Pelosi called General Milley after the Capitol riots and told him to protect the nuclear codes from former President Trump. Milley reportedly agreed and then took steps to potentially limit Trump's powers. Defense officials are telling Jennifer Griffin those two allegations are not true and the calls with China were not secret. And Milley's office issuing a statement today saying his actions were routine and part of his normal duties. But Republicans are demanding answers, with some calling for Milley to step down. I think General Milley has a lot of explaining to do, and I think he ought to stop bellowing and honking on like a goose about white rage and actually try to make our country more secure. Imagine if tomorrow General Milley decides, I think Joe Biden is senile. And so you know what? I'm not going to follow his orders. I'm going to collude with Russia and China to prevent us from acting. Or, or, they, or a future president. I don't think he's in his right mind either, because it, it is the essence, a military coup. It should be investigated immediately today. He should be questioned under oath, if not with a polygraph test, whether it happened. If it happened, he should be immediately relieved of his duties and court-martialed. So here we go, Jesse, another one of these books with some blind <laughs> quotes, nothing like that to get the oh, juices flowing in cable news. I never say this, Dana, okay. <laughs> but I don't know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that my sources in Trump world are saying that he probably had his team leak this, Millie, to make himself look heroic, and it's blowing up in his face. They say this guy wants to be loved by the left, and he wants to be the, known as the guy that saved America from Trump. Remember, he was a part of this cabal with Mattis and John, General Kelly that were going to protect America from Trump's baser instincts. I'm also told he's always been very dismissive of civilian control, always kind of disrespectful when civilians pipe up about what they think the military should be doing. And he's always said the same thing. The military is independent. The military is independent. It's actually not independent. It's underneath civilian control. And I know he's a four-star general, and I respect him for that, but he's also a four-star leaker. Because as you know, Dana, I have read every single mainstream media book about 2020, and this guy, Milley, comes off better than Joe Biden. It's almost like he would write his own book like, I don't know, How I Saved the World. That's the kind of <laughs> savior complex that this general has. So let's look at the allegation. Let's say the Chinese did think falsely, that we were about to launch some sort of strike on the Chinese mainland, and Milley takes that information. Milley should take it to the defense secretary, then go to the commander-in-chief, and let the commander-in-chief's administration decide what message to send to China. If anything at all, maybe keep him guessing. Mm. But he said he carved out, allegedly, the commander-in-chief, the civilian side, from this. This is the greatest intel ever. Our biggest enemy thinks we're about to hit him, and you don't tell the commander-in-chief that? That's crazy. And to say we weren't going to hit you, you know, if we do hit you, we'll let you know. That is not how the U.S. military speaks to our enemies. And it also tells the Chinese that the civilian side is not even in control of the country, that the U.S. military is running America. And that's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. The other allegation, which has been widely reported, was that he went to Nancy and Chuck, I'm not going to say crying, but he does cry, and say, listen, we're going to put up roadblocks in case Trump wants to launch a use of force. Now, anybody that knows Trump knows he wouldn't do that. Very reticent and precise with his use of force. And if you're a Republican, if you're a Democrat, it's dangerous for a democracy to do that. So okay. if he goes out there and testifies, he has to be honest with the American people and flat out say, I either did this or I didn't, and let the chips fall. So uh, thoughts and prayers to... Uh, She's going to blow up in a yeah, second. Yeah, I'm going to go to her. I was going to go to you, but I think that I can't contain... <laughs> The energy. Not, no, but like thoughts and prayers for whoever has to prepare him for his hearing on the 28th. Uh, I don't know who this guy thinks he is, that he has the authority to call his equal in the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, to tell Xi Jinping, listen, I'll give you a heads up if we're coming after you. And he, apparently it's Nancy Pelosi who called him after January 6th and said, I want, I want this guy arrested on the spot. She allegedly was screaming. She was hysterical. So he then calls everyone together and says, look, the, the only way this is going to work with the nuclear football is we got to go through X, Y, and Z. Look, 
He is a political, I don't want to call him uh, what I want to call him, but he is a political person. He went to the church with President Trump when President Trump carried the Bible and when the, everybody on the left said, you know, it was, they, they, the National Guard moved everyone out, they didn't move everyone out. OK, and then he apologized for walking with the president. This guy is a political operative. He's got no command. His role is to advise. And you know what? As if Afghanistan wasn't enough, we now need this to get him the hell out of the Pentagon. He needs to be gone. And shame on him. And by the way, if he were any kind of man, he would have gotten together and at least told the cabinet for the 25th Amendment as opposed to running around if he didn't want to tell the president. And the fact that he told Esper is not enough for me. That's not enough. Mm -hmm. He should have gone and spoken to the president with Esper. Who the hell is he to call the Chinese? And that's all I have to say. He, a lot of attention was already on General Milley because of the last month in Afghanistan. Uh, he is going to have to testify at the end of the month. But President Biden is already being asked, do you still have confidence in General Milley? He said yes today. Do you think that holds? Well, We'll see how the reporting bears out when the book actually gets to us and then the reporters are done doing this. I mean, Jennifer Griffin, who's obviously incredibly reliable, uh, went against the report last night saying that her sources are telling her that everyone who was in the chain of command that was supposed to be on those calls was there up to 15 people. That's now been confirmed by an Axios report today. Josh Rogan is also in agreement with that, what he's hearing from his sources. His chain of command would be to go to Esper to have the Secretary of Defense there when he's having these conversations. And he said that he absolutely, or his office said, did not violate the chain of command when it comes to the nuclear codes. Uh, so I understand why President Biden isn't hurrying to fire his Joint Chiefs of Staff because Twitter has their panties in a twist mm -hmm. today. Sexist. But <laughs> not all men panties. can wear pants. Boxers, maybe. Your undergarments, Thank you. if you choose to wear them. <laughs> um, to the point about him being someone that's a political figure, yes, he went out with the president, but there was more that went on that day, which was also that there was tear gas used against uh, peaceful demonstrators. It was a First Amendment violation and something that's been widely looked into. And for him to say that he was on the side of the people who were coming out uh, to peacefully protest there while the president walked over um, to the church, I think is actually the appropriate thing but, hey, to do. But that had nothing to do with Trump, right? What? Isn't that right. It had it had nothing to do with Trump. They just, blamed just she brought Trump. Up the, she brought up just that the whole, walking that whole, with him. The, that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was a really wuss move on his part. Yeah. So the people who criticized President Trump for insufficient dedication to the rule of law, um, many of them are praising General Milley for the idea that maybe he went outside, you know, the rule of law or the process. So here's some. Uh, media folks, a montage. Uh, I love the media. Play this. He seems to be the greatest patriot uh, that was on duty during the previous administration. I don't blame General Milley for any of this in as much as I blame Donald Trump. God bless General Milley for straightening things out. Mm -hmm. I know that the chain of command is sacrosanct. I understand that. But this was an emergency. This guy, we had a, a certifiable nutcase in the White House. She thinks it's an emergency. No, no, that's <laughs> just the, this is their cognitive bias. They will condemn you for th saying the same thing in the minute that barking bag of nonsense, and I'm not talking about Joy Behar, I'm talking about the guy that talks like this. So he's looking at the camera. What's his name, Scott Smith? Steve Smith. Yeah, he's a nobody. They're, 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 they, they have like a, they, they enter this emotional delusional state that causes amnesia where they can't remember saying the exact opposite thing. So what this to me smells true because of all the wannabe heroes who were so emotionally invested in fantasizing this good versus evil battle in which they're going to, they're going to save the world from Trump, right? And we saw that a lot with the anonymous sources, and there were always people that were going to yep. you know, prevent, the, prevent the country from this evil man. And then what happens is they elect somebody that then puts our troops in harm's way and creates basically a, a, a duck shoot in Afghanistan. <laughs> um, the idea, if this is true, okay, again, if this is true is a great idea for a segment. Yeah. Think it's true. <laughs> if this is true, uh, is that can somebody actually believe that we were going, can anybody actually believe that we were going to invade China back in January? Yeah. If somebody actually believed that, that's the person who's crazy. That's, it's Millie who is insane. If you actually, oh my God, he's going it's to invade China. The Chinese China. were insane. They, they, they're all insane. Oh, that, that's, it's, it's in, that, but it, I'm telling you, that is what shows you how delusional and emotionally invested these people were, that they, they lost their common sense. The one thing that I also hate about this story 
is that it's going to sell books <laughs> because yeah. this is uh, that, this, this is what they do every single time. Yeah, exactly. And we all I don't say we all fall for it because it is a news story. But it, it is so absurd to think that this is the actual like reason like he called is hysterical. And if well, it's true, then they held the book for profit. Yes, exactly. Right, instead of getting it out there. And imagine if they hadn't held this story. There might have been a different outcome in Afghanistan because Millie would have been gone. Boom. I'm tired of the, the, a lot of the books with the blind quotes. Yeah. Are you tired of them? I'm so tired of them. I just can't stop can't buying stop them. can't stop reading them. Though. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.